Good afternoon, everybody. This is Patrick Montes Dioca with the uh, Equity Management Academy live trading room for a special report on the E-mini S&P 500. After the uh, correction that we saw here recently, I wanted to take the, the uh, time out to see what the market did and uh, basically how much damage was done or uh, what levels are we are in right now in terms of support or in terms of supply and demand and see what the VCPMI has been able to identify. If we take a look at the chart for the December mini S&P, um, the last uh, price uh, closed at 28.77, up about 46, 46 and a half points. What you're looking at in the chart is basically the uh, structure of the uh, mean reversion structure that uh, the VCPMI, artificial intelligence automated algorithm, which is uh, written in C++ in TradeStation platform, is telling us about the E-mini S&P. The uh, blue levels that you see here basically are identified as uh, levels of demand and what we have here is a perfect Fibonacci structure that identifies for us the average price or the mean in this case the green level 2960 and it gives us two levels above the mean cell one and cell two levels and also below the mean of buy one and buy two levels. One of the things that is important to uh, understand about the application of the VCPMI for self-directed traders is that when the price comes down the first time to touch any of these pivot levels, pivot points, um, support resistance levels, um, they identify for us a very extremely high probability that when the price comes down into the blue area it's identifying an area of demand and it is preparing us to see the price action or reaction you might say in terms of the supply and demand in this area and the first time that it comes down it, it usually alerts us as a self-directed traders to a new setup is in place it's kind of a tap on the shoulder and it tells you, okay, we've come down and we have met the target from the extreme above the mean of the cell one level of 3004. As you can see here, the high uh, made for this move for this period was 3032.25. The cell two level is all the way up to 3074. As you can see here, the market was not able to carry through the demand into the area of distribution of supply, which is in red. And when the price closes below the pivot level, below the price level of cell one, it activates a short trigger. When the trigger is activated, it automatically activates the target below. In this case, the first target was 29.60 all the way down to 28.45 as you can see here for the weekly structure that we have coming into this week and so the market price has come down not only uh, to uh, uh, give us a setup but today it has come down to make a new low from the previous day and to close above the buy two level thus activating a buy signal on a weekly basis. Once the signal is activated, and in this, at this point the market went long at 28.78, you can use the B2 level of 28.45 as your stop protective level. Your first target, if you do it multiples, is 28.89 you can take off some of your positions whether it be in future stocks ETFs at this level 
if the market closes above it again then it's activating the higher levels of the mean of 2960 as the next target and so if activated you can go back up to 100 percent of your position and basically anticipate the target of 2960 to be completed if you initiate the buy trigger from the b1 level use the b1 level as your stop as we are doing here on this signal that was activated from the b2 level of 2878 our stop is 2845 on a closing basis using the 15 minute bar Are you looking for an automated artificial intelligence trading system? Do you want to analyze commodities and financial markets to determine when to buy and sell? Looking for an indicator to predict future trends in the commodities and financial markets? Welcome to EMA2 Trade Live Signals. Our Variable Changing Price Momentum Indicator, VCPMI, is an automated AI trading system developed and tested over a decade. The VCPMI algorithm is based on age-old vortex mathematics combined with Fibonacci wave theory, trend analysis, pivot points, and several other widely accepted financial analytical methods. The VCPMI can help you take emotions out of your trading and rely on simple mathematics to predict future trends in financial markets. This approach will make your trading more effective, consistent, and profitable. VC PMI algorithm. The VC PMI code points and levels are support and resistance levels and behave exactly like any historical supply and demand level. Therefore, the VC PMI code levels are useful as an index tool for both day trading and for selecting and exercising entries and exits for longer term traders. Why VC PMI? The VCPMI relies on artificial intelligence to analyze markets and predicts future movements, which seek to determine what a security or commodity is worth at a given point in time. The VCPMI uses technical analysis in the form of mean reversion trading, which seeks to capitalize on extreme changes in the pricing of a particular market based on the assumption that it will revert to its previous state. The VCPMI can be applied to both buying and selling as it allows a trader to profit on unexpected upswings and save when security or commodity is trading at an abnormal level. Visit EMA2Trade.com for more details. Yep, sound advice. I'm speaking with the founder and CEO of the Equity Management Academy, Patrick Montes de Oca, who runs the Mean Reversion Trading Marketplace service here at Seeking Alpha. You can sign up for Mean Reversion Trading either by going to seekingalpha.com forward slash marketplace and looking for Mean Reversion Trading, or by typing Mean Reversion Trading or Equity Management Academy into the search bar at the top of the site. Okay, so you uh, you mentioned risk management, uh, and, and of course, the system that you're um, that you're using here is probabilistic, which means that it's not going to to nail the direction 100% of the time. Uh, so, what sort of things do you do or, or recommend to people uh, via the academy to manage risk? Well, first of all, when you go in, uh, let's say we use the factor of uh, the uh, principal investment equals X okay and so if you have uh, the X factor clear in your mind and that equals a hundred percent okay, then depending on where the algorithm is in relation to all the trends for example you can begin to activate percentages based on that for example if we were to be in the market yesterday in the metals and uh, we were we recommended to get out and to be looking for a reversion okay to occur we uh, went flat and basically we identify the uh, three trends the daily weekly and monthly trends to uh, be almost at the same price 
when the price came down below the, the, the uh, critical level that we look at, it activated the reversion. And, and, and so that was a time that it identifies for you potentially a trend direction short term. And it could be a duration of uh, maybe a couple of weeks generally until the prices come back down to align themselves on the B1, B2 level or the level of demand, you with me, and, and harmonically align itself into the daily, weekly and monthly numbers once again which will be at the extreme below the mean. And so those times are times where you you can manage your position a little more aggressively, you know, um, when, when you identify the harmonics in the trend. Did I answer the question? Yeah, I, I think so, definitely. So in terms of you, you uh, are using this system to trade S&P 500 minis, gold and silver, and uh, just have to ask why these three, three assets? Let, 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 me, uh, yeah, let, let me, uh, for a minute, uh, finish oh, yeah, the sure. question regarding the risk, because um, when you identify the portfolio of 100%, let's say that you want to commit to the market, then you, if you have, for example, a perfect alignment in, in prices like yesterday, in all the three trends, then you could be buying like I was for the mini, the bear ETF, which is the SPXS. Right. Well, is that the, uh, is that the pro shares? Uh, it's that's the triple. The that's the triple three, three to one. Uh -huh. It's a triple leg. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the, because I'm, I'm an aggressive trader, you with me, I want to play the aggressive play. And I'm expecting the prices, like I said to you, based on the VCPMI, is anticipating a reversion uh, back down into the uh, harmonics of blue again. You know, I want to write this, uh, the SPXS, which is the bearish ETF. And that's where I've been trading for a hedge fund that I'm managing, which, by the way, is uh, up about 10% uh, for the year so far. And, uh, and I'm applying, actually, the, uh, the automation of the VCPMI to manage the fund. Nice. Except that I'm using that in security. So um, what I'm showing here is that the signal, although it's a directional signal in the futures markets, the application can be exponential based on your size, based on your particular situation individually. Sure. And so you're, is everybody basically just trading the S&P 500 uh, gold and silver, or can this system be be effectively applied to other assets to, 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 to answer that question again, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, the answer is yes. It can be effectively applied with, with same probabilities because the program will adjust to the volatility of each individual market. And and the data that it will provide will be based on sure, that. Sure, although I, I understand that okay, so I, I would assume the is, underlying volume in a given asset would determine how uh, robust that probability is. That's exactly that's exactly the reason why I trade gold, silver, and the mini. You see, because it's liquid, it's uh, it's volatile. Mm -hmm. You with me? Uh, 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 and and for some reason. I'm finding that the relationship of the indices to the principle of the reversion to the mean is even more accurate so far than any other market that I've traded. And it may be that because it is a paper market, you know, meaning stocks and the futures itself is the underlying is, is you know, the paper, so to speak, than the commodity. Uh, so that uh, the uh, risk management is done based once again on where it is, where the price is in relation to the uh, the trends. For example, if it was yesterday, going back to you know uh, where the price was in the metals or the E mini is, for example, you know you can you can use this position to accumulate, for example, the bear ETF in all in all the three trends, and this is where you may come in. And, and, and take a, a 20%, 30% of your portfolio in this position, you see? Uh -huh. And and so upon confirmation, you know, uh, you go into, you know, 50%. And so that eventually when it breaks out up into the reversion completion, you should be, you should be long maybe 80, 90%. But when it reaches the target, you liquidate 90 80 percent of that and you go back to 
maintaining a very small risk position. Or you liquidate all of it, you know, depending on if it reaches the extreme level, you might say again, of the reversion to the mean above, you know, if you buy it below and it goes all the way from B2 to sell 2, let's say, you know, then yes, of course, then you lock in your, your profits up there. So it doesn't matter where the price goes, the market will give you a structure to trade from where it identifies for you the probabilities above the mean or above the average with 90, 95% probability or below the market with very, very specific uh, levels and also 90, 95% probability. Sure, and you, you have tight stops in place, I would assume, on the upside. And well, downside. see, when you enter the trade, automatically the stop is identified below. Uh, like I said to you, on this trade that was done earlier, Mm -hmm. The entry, the entry was twenty seven seventy five. Mm -hmm. The stop was twenty seven seventy six. Yes, but what if it what if it moves in the opposite direction downwards? The, if it closes below twenty seven seventy six, you get out. If you didn't take profits today, when it gave you mm -hmm. the chance, the close below was twenty seven seventy five fifty, so you'd be stopped out. Gotcha. At, okay. At twenty-seven mm -hmm. seventy-five fifty, your entry point was seventy-seven seventy-five. Uh huh. That's your risk. You're flat. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Gotcha. Yeah. So that that's the 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 risk uh, the risk control is is happening through very tight. Yeah. Stops. And in other words, when the order is activated, it immediately activates the stop above or below, or the target above or below the signal. Mm -hmm. Immediately, I said I was going to ask. Uh, I was going to ask questions about what uh, vehicles you, what your preferred trading vehicles are for gold. The J Nog for gold. Okay, that's a uh, that's a minor ETF, but it's triple X. It it's uh -huh. the uh, bull. Sure, although it's not it's not direct. It's fairly directly correlated. The underlying to the is of... the, the GDXJ, mm -hmm. which is one on one. And it does follow very closely the uh, the futures price, and because it is a, a triple X ETF, uh, as I said, I'm an aggressive trader, so we're talking about the way that I manage the risk, and because I have mm -hmm. the tools to help me manage the risk, which is the VCPMI, then you know when I get a directional signal, let's say in the automation, then I apply the exponential application where I go in and I buy you know, a thousand, two thousand, sometimes, you know, 10,000 shares of JNUG. And if I want to eliminate the margin, for example, okay, this is a very critical point. I recommend traders that trade the futures markets, regardless of how financially set you are to day trade the futures markets and position yourself in ETFs, in ETFs uh, so that mm -hmm. you can basically hold the position overnight. Because I don't care how well financed you are, uh, trading, trading um, in in uh, uh, the futures markets can be treacherous, particularly in the global base. You know, so if you like, let's say like yesterday or mm -hmm. where we are now in the mini, for example, where uh, the reversion is is getting confirmation, is given confirmation based on the action today, that is reverting back down possibly into that low twenty seven hundred. So how do I take advantage of that signal well I don't like the futures risk I got a confirmation of a short signal happening you with me therefore uh, I, I, I can buy the SPX S mm -hmm. ETF which I did and I covered it by selling calls way above the market and collect credit so I'm done I bought it my average price is 2250 I sold it at 25 mm -hmm. 24 I collect you know uh, a credit I'm done. The market runs up there. It takes me out. I, I make a, a nice profit. If it comes down, it will eat the premium of the call, you and me, which I will keep. And I can always be riding against the ETF mm -hmm. if that's the case. So uh, it's a question of, of uh, how you manage uh, the risk, you know. And for me, as I said, I'd rather be long. A 
I think the, the, the futures margin is, let's say, uh, for overnight position, maybe it's about 10, 15,000, depending on your broker. You know, I'd rather take that money and buy the SPXS or the L, which is the mm -hmm. long, and carry the position because since, a, since uh, these uh, ETFs are triple mm -hmm. X ETFs, when you get a, uh, uh, a 2 or 3% move in the futures price, they're going to give you 10, 15%, sometimes 20, 30% in a day. Sure, yeah, and a super, super big move in one direction, definitely. And how long are you holding? Uh, you're saying overnight, but you're you're not holding these funds. Uh, for the week, day trades, I, 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 I day trade the future and I get out at the end of the day. But if I want to hold it into a swing, I convert it to an ETF. And when I get my price, which is generally sometimes two or three days, I, I, I get out, you know. Uh, yeah. and, and so I'm building trades where I go in and I, I, I pick up a couple of grand here, a uh, grand here, 800 here, you know, but I'm active in locking in the profits. Uh, now, that's managing my position short term. Okay. Mm -hmm. So depending on where the market is, again, it will give you the opportunity for you to manage your position short term, put on a swing and put on a position trade where you can buy and hold for a month or you know, if you're, if you're looking for a uh, trend to unfold. Yeah. So the market will always tell you, and the relationship of the price between the, 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 the trends will identify for you, you and me, the, uh, the bigger picture in terms of uh, the trend direction that you, may, that, you may, uh, that you may have. Point in case here, the market is coming down 27.7150 on the ES, and the revision now is, is, is on the weekly is working, uh, because the weekly uh, signal came in short, and the target is 27.52, the first target. The uh, daily already, you know, uh, completed the, the buy one target, and uh, now it's looking at the sell two target of 27, uh, the buy one target of 27.66. Okay, hear me out for a minute. I just told you the buy two target in price is 27.66 and I told you the weekly average is 27.52 correct yes when the price equals the same that's what we call harmonics alignment mm -hmm. so we're very close to that you see what I'm saying yeah and that's how we connect the day trend with the weekly trend and the monthly trend and it's purely mathematical yeah, no, no emotion involved at all. Yeah, exactly. You, you can hear by just the way I talk. I talk numbers. You know, it's like, it's yeah. like explaining to you the multiple table, so to speak. <laughs> totally. And sorry, just because you had mentioned silver, also, is there a preferred uh, vehicle that you used to trade silver? I uh, used to trade the USLV un until mm -hmm. they the broke the stock, so to speak. They uh, they rolled. Yeah, down. they. I think it was three to one they split the stock and it became very mm -hmm. expensive so the, the 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 other thing I want to point out to you with, with regards to the metals here which uh, I think a lot of people that have been trading the metals have experienced and that is in fact that the metals have been completely manipulated away from its equilibrium price or its real mean or its real average price and uh, you know which is uh, what's been going on for the last four years and so it's a different dynamic when you're trading uh, in the metals, so to speak, uh, then you might say the equity markets, because the silver market in particular is a very thin market. And, you know, large traders, bankers uh, uh, tend to use that market to control the price, you know, the price of gold. If they can, uh, if they can move the price of gold the way they want to, they'll use the thin market like silver, for example, to, to affect the price. And so, that movement is an artificial movement that has nothing to do with the uh, the actual function of the uh, of the price of the market because it's manipulated in that sense but what the algorithm will do is it will identify for you when they get it to an extreme level mm -hmm. you with me and when when they get yeah. it to an extreme level it will go harmonic again the, the, the prices will link and that's when the program will tell you, regardless of the energy underneath, regardless of the reason why the market went there, look for a reversion to occur. Because mathematically, and the physics of the market of trading tells you 
it's reached an extreme a 95 98 when it's when when the three trends are harmonically aligned it's like a hundred percent probability of the reversion to occur from there and if you want to go trade against that probability good luck you know <laughs> <laughs> sure so i have uh, one one other question i've been uh, been meaning to ask here and that is are there uh, ever kind of extreme market conditions let's say thinking back to uh, 2008 2009 or maybe even uh, you know, going back earlier than that, uh, some of the market disruptions in the early 2000s or late 90s or maybe uh, 87, where the system just totally breaks down and your your basic advice is just stay on the sidelines until things kind of, kind of straighten out here? That's a very good question because that's what happened to me in 2008, that I was uh, – I only had one algorithm and um, – when the market, for example, in crude, as an example, I was long crude and I had like a, a huge profit. I had like a hundred and something percent profit. Yeah. I was going to say, is that when crude was uh, basically over a yes. hundred uh, dollars? Yeah. For, for me, the program, you know, uh, had a profit, but it didn't follow it. The, the stop didn't trail it. It didn't adjust to the volatility. And, and lo and behold, of course, when the market collapsed, I wind up giving all the profit. And I think I netted with about 23% profit, you know, after being up so much. And, and of course, the market collapsed in 2008. And uh, I was uh, a victim of MF Global, you know, that $1.3 billion disappear of, of equity funds. And unfortunately, I, I had my business with them. The uh, automated program was uh, traded in their platform. I think it was Strategy Runner. And so, and that wasn't it wasn't uh, FDIC insured or, or anything. You can read about it if you Google it, and uh, it, it didn't matter if it was insured. Yeah, it, yeah no, I just don't it, remember it was the very, exact very painful, of, uh, very painful experience. I, and you never get you never get a, 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 your dime your, your money back. You know, they give you nickels and dimes, if anything. But you know, I always learn. I always have the philosophy: what can I learn from my experience? You know, what is it that I can learn from here? And in fact, what I learned was that I had to take uh, the uh, algorithm and I, I broke it down and, and, and created three different components, three different trends, you know, three different algorithms out of that because I had to break it down and find out uh, how I can adjust the uh, uh, algorithm to the volatility of the market so that, you know, it, the same thing won't happen. And so what I did is I adjusted the algorithm so that it will tell me when that happens and when that happens if you read in closely in, in some of the uh, instructions that i have in there with the book that i wrote usually usually when the price closes above the cell two level okay which is the extreme above the mean level of resistance okay the price will activate that resistance as support it will convert that resistance to support, okay? And that support now connects to the weekly data. So instead of looking at the daily data automatically, when it closes above SIL2, you look at the weekly data. You look at the weekly signals. And it tells you when it closes above SIL2, you don't sell to open. You don't go short to open. You only sell to liquidate. I'm sorry. If you're on sell to you don't buy to open excuse me you don't buy to open you don't buy to open you only look to sell okay. once you get the confirmation because as i said like say here for example today's rally was uh, the sell to level is 28 or 1 okay that's the resistance today that's the sell to level if the price had closed above the 28 or 1 it would convert that resistance to support and that sets you and that sets the the price fractal uh higher and and then it falls into the weekly and the monthly patterns and and and, and, and you with me and for example like uh in the gold yesterday uh, that happened you know and then you looked at the monthly data because the weekly broke above the sell two and the weekly uh, sell one the monthly sell one level was 27.98 so when the price of the daily closes above sell two, you look at the sell one weekly, where it is in relation to that. And more than likely, it's going to be pretty close or above it. Particularly if it's harmonic, is what I'm saying. 
Mm -hmm. You with me? And then if the weekly closes above the sale too, then you look at the monthly. Yeah. And so when that happens, you are going to find that all the three trends are in red, are in supply. Like in the mini yesterday, like in gold yesterday. And that tells you the the, the, the system is going to change. And don't uh, in other words, you know, it, 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 it can go higher, it can go into that uh, weekly sell one, you with me? And so it tells you now, if it, on the daily, if it closes above the sell two, you don't open positions to go short there because it can go higher. You wait for the market to correct to the buy one or buy two levels of demand to get long. Sure. So there's, I mean, there's really a lot of positioning and, and repositioning happening uh, over the course of the day in, in this. If the, the the price is what dictates that. Yeah, sure. You see? And so, but there are only certain strategies that the market will do up or down, you know, or sideways that uh, with, within this structure is my point. And I know, I know it's very difficult to comprehend, you know, what I'm saying to you in terms of understanding the dynamics of the harmonics that we talk about, but it's basically the price equals the same on all the three trends. And when that happens occasionally, maybe a couple of times a month is when the trend usually reverses. It tells us, you know, the system has changed. Uh, you don't, you know, if you want a day trade, then look to, uh, you know, uh, as you, you know, as when, when trend traders identify this, they usually say buy corrections only or sell rallies only. You with me? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's that it's that artificial intelligence yeah. that's built into the algorithm, and and that is the artificial intelligence that I that I coach and teach self-directed traders. You know, it, 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 there yeah. is one uh, one one uh, thing that I've uh, experienced here, which is basically to use the automation, you know, as a, as an indicator or as a, as a tool, so to speak, for me to trade my self-directed account a little more intelligently you know mm -hmm. it, it just makes all the sense in the world i suggest don't let the automation don't take it for granted just because it's automated that it's gonna uh, produce you know a million dollars for you overnight you know you, mm -hmm. you still have to manage it you know even pilots when they fly the plane on automation they still have a co-pilot watching it yep and in certain conditions they have to they got to take the wheel yeah exactly yeah, so you want to be aware, prepare, but this takes a lot of the stress out, the emotion out, and it makes you trade systematically, methodically. Yeah, no, sure. Fascinating stuff. Uh, this has been really great. Patrick. I appreciate it. I was wondering if you had uh, had any final words for our listeners before we uh, go here. You know, I think one of the things that is important to recognize for me, for example, is that when I decided to become a trader, I decided to accept the responsibility of a trader. And that is discipline, consistency, you know, uh, how to manage your emotions and how to control your emotions. When you go into trading, look at it as a business venture. Like you're going into the business, like you're going into a business. And the business that you're going to is you're going into every business if you're trading commodities. You can be in the gold business, you can be in the silver business, you can be in the indices, you can be in stocks. Your business as a trader is every business out there that you feel that you can trade. Okay, But mm -hmm. as a business, you want to specialize, you and me, and maximize based on your goals, objectives, profit margin, so that when you begin to run your business and you begin to show a profit consistency a, a consistent profit ratio so to speak don't be greedy emotional that when you have a profit you don't take it you want more you wait oh i'm going to get a little more i'll wait a little more or change your strategy from day trading to swing trading don't second guess yourself be very definite about your trades. Go into the market knowing exactly what you're going to do. Do not be influenced by the chatter out there. Try to be independent. Try to isolate yourself into the work that you do. Because if you do the work mathematically, math don't lie. Mathematics always tells you the truth.
as opposed to fundamentals, as opposed to CNBC, which is trading blind. And so for myself, uh, what I would say to you is, uh, you know, uh, create a, 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 a process for you. For example, just to share with you, and it doesn't mean that, you know, you have to do what I do. Every morning I get up and I meditate for an hour. I run. I do yoga before I come into trading. And when I'm when I come in, I'm fresh. I'm completely clean. My thoughts are clean. You with me? I close my doors and it's silence in me and the market. I have my tools. I have my numbers in place. I have my screens all set up. There is no stress. I don't need to worry about where the market is going. I don't need to worry about the chatter. I don't need to listen to the news. I only need to trust myself as a trader and try the tools that I'm working with. And so time and time again, as I've done this discipline, I have found mm -hmm. that whenever I second guess it emotionally, as a trader, I will. And I, I, I continue to do that, you know, because I'm, I'm human. I'm, I'm emotional. Every time I second trade it, it proves me wrong as opposed to just following it right or wrong. And it will not be right 100%. But if I can go in there as a trader and make 60, 70 percent of the range that I'm looking to make, I'm happy. I'm happy. So mm -hmm. um, discipline, passion, sure. patience, and manage your emotions is what I would recommend. Nice. Sound advice. I like that. I think that's a good, good place to leave off. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been great. Thank Patrick. you so much, Jonathan. I look forward to next time. You've been enjoying the Seeking Alpha Marketplace Roundtable podcast. You can subscribe through iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher. You can also give reviews on those platforms to help other investors discover this podcast. We just spoke with CEO and founder of Equity Management Academy, Patrick Montes de Oca, who runs the Mean Reversion Trading Marketplace service here at Seeking Alpha. You can sign up for Mean Reversion Trading either by going to SeekingAlpha.com forward slash marketplace and looking for Mean Reversion Trading or by typing Mean Reversion Trading or Equity Management Academy into the search bar at the top of the site. You can also follow Equity Management Academy on Seeking Alpha and enjoy their free content there. For disclosures, I don't have positions in any of the funds mentioned in today's show. Patrick Montes de Oca is a day trader and thus may have positions in JNUG, JDST, SPXS, SPXL, as well as the futures of the S&P 500 mini, gold, and silver.